Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. Good evening and welcome to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast. I am Chris Randazzo and joining me tonight is Whammy Dan Ryan. <laughs> I love when you change stuff right on the fly. It's great. It, you know, you, you had me going with the no whammies and the stop and you press your luck. That's right. Oh, what a good show. Anyway. Anyway, as June comes to a close, so must we bring you the 10, 20, 30, 40. I hope you're ready to... The men of, nope, I didn't finish that. Yep. It was supposed to be something about Madagascar. There's a bunch of Madagascar ports. Press your luck because the Stone Age Giver podcast starts now. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I mean... You could not have nailed that any harder if if you had a hammer. Smooth like deep fried butter. Speaking <clears> of <throat> Madagascar, Chris. Um, um, I was really hoping this was going speaking of deep fried butter, but oh, fine. No. God, no, Go I ahead. wish. I, uh, I learned some interesting things uh, this weekend. So I, I found out, like I was just doing some research on, um, on possible uh, vacation destinations, right? Because maybe one day in the future, not anytime soon. But maybe one day in the future, I will take a vacation. So we're looking at, at some of the different uh, uh, Caribbean islands, right? Or Caribbean mm. islands. Um, we're looking at like... How are Re- you supposed to say that? I don't know. Uh, I think it depends. And I don't know what it depends on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how's that for a non-committal answer? Um <laughs> But like we were, we were looking at like a couple different places. I was looking at like Antigua and Guadalupe and Martinique and Saint Lucia, and I and I saw some things, and I I just I thought it was like really interesting. Um, like for example, in Saint Lucia, right, the the price of a slice of apple pie in Saint Lucia is a dollar fifty, right? Okay. And then in a place like the Virgin Islands. A slice of apple pie is like a dollar sixty, and then in like Barbuda, it's like a dollar seventy-five. And I was like, "Wow, I never thought that I would find all of these this information on the pie rates of the Caribbean." <laughs> and I just wanted to share that with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good job. <laughs> good. Very nice work. I'm so happy that you gave me a solid lead into that. What are the fucking chances? Really? That was, uh, Ooh. what are the odds? Well, anyway, <laughs> hi, everyone. This is episode 417. It is the week of July 1st, 2022. Uh, everything is horrible, and we all, we're all going to die, but uh, <laughs> what, video, what video games have you been playing? Oh, my God. So I've had, uh, I've had off from work, and uh, to distract myself... Uh, from the horror show that is uh, that is life uh, currently, um, I have been playing the show uh, because I've been so far behind, like so far behind on getting <clears throat> content done that I have just been mainlining the show trying to catch up, and I'm like I'm almost caught up uh, to where where I'll be happy with like the the monthly or. They're not monthly, but the the current program that's happening is the uh, Faces of the Future. So it's a bunch of, like, prospect cards and stuff like that. that some are really good. Some are kind of, eh, I, you could have picked somebody better. But um, there's just been some really fun stuff uh, going on. There's been a couple drops of the... Do you know what the uh, City Connect uniforms are, Chris? Have you heard? Has that made uh, you, its I- way to your sphere? I know City Connection for NES. No, very different. Oh, okay. Um, no, it's actually 100% the same. Um, <laughs> you little car, you drive around and paint the ground. Yeah, no, it's great. It makes total sense. Um, Nike took over uh, the the development, uh, the management. I, I don't know exactly what you would call it. They They provide the uniforms for Major League Baseball now. And Nike being Nike, um, which is, they're such a weird company because in some aspects they're wildly progressive and very ahead of the curve. And then in other aspects, it's like, wow, you guys would have been slave owners. Um, It's just (laughs) fucking wild how you can be both of those things. 
um they uh they do a lot of uh weird shit with the jerseys and one of the things that they're doing is the city connect program and they have decided to redesign uh major league uniforms uh to to represent something unique about each location uh so for example the one that was really really great uh was the washington nationals because it's in washington dc the cherry blossom uh festival that happens in washington dc uh the uniforms that they put out have like it's like a dark gray shirt with like darker gray um like almost like a, a matte and um satin kind of look to it uh of like cherry blossoms on these it, they're, they're really really nice looking and then other ones like the colorado rockies have a green and white shirt with a picture of like the the rocky mountains on them and that's really cool uh but then they have green pants and there's something really really off-putting about seeing a baseball player in pants that are neither white nor gray like literally any other color pants on a baseball player and it looks like they're wearing pajamas and i'm not really sure why that is um (laughs) But it, it's it's just true, and the Colorado Rockies, like it looks either like pajamas or that they are like the lead driver on the Hess race driving team, um, or whatever the <laughs> fuck that's called. I don't even know. Anyway, short story long. Uh, there's been a bunch of like uniforms and stuff that have dropped, and the progression system is wildly different uh, for this version of the game than it was previously, where you have to earn like. Uh, parallel points by playing with specific players from specific teams to accomplish different things. So I've been like trying to run through all of that stuff uh, while also trying to get through um, some of the games that they've put out on PlayStation Plus as well. Like I downloaded Assassin's Creed Valhalla and haven't started it yet because I'm really curious to see just how far off the rails that series has gone. Because if you remember... Assassin's Creed was originally going to be grounded in reality. Wasn't there also like a sci-fi element though? Like the whole thing was about reading some dude's memories? Yes, but it was grounded in reality. Like it it was still somewhat based in like truth and what could actually happen and like not these crazy, crazy fantastical elements that a title like Valhalla would lead you to believe are in there. Right. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Very, very curious to see uh, where where all that has gone. Uh, but I haven't started it yet because I decided uh, that I was going to finish uh, Jedi Fallen Order, um, and I am up to the last area on that. Uh, mostly because they kept referencing stuff. Like I, you guys watch heavy spoilers, right? Is that the I don't know what thing that means? You- Oh, there! I thought you had said that you guys, you and Karen, watch like a YouTube thing, because we watch Screen Crush after every episode of like Obi Wan or Miss Marvel. Oh, or right, we watch the Nerdist ones. Oh, the Nerdist one. Okay. Um, and the the guy Ryan Airy who does uh who does the Screen Crush stuff kept referencing um Jedi Fallen Order. He was like, you know, we first saw this in Jedi Fallen Order, and you know the night the sisters and blah blah blah. And I was like, I really got to fucking finish that game. I don't know why I stopped. So I'm up to uh it's boring. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, it's a little boring. It's cool. Like I really like it. It's and just like, the fact that all those things appear in Jedi Fallen Order it means absolutely nothing. There's no significance no, sure. to it at all. Yeah. No, it was just although, something where I was like, I gotta go although, back and finish this. There's a rumor that the physical model for Cal Kestis might be reprising his role in a live action series about Cal Kestis. I think that would be really cool because I, I really like Jedi Fallen Order. I think it's, I know that I really like it. It's I not know that about great. you. It's not great. There is playing that game. The potential is there for a really, really stellar fucking game. Like there is, there is something. The DNA is there, and as a first step in making. A a Star Wars a third person action Star Wars game that is not uh whatever what was the last one the Force Unleashed the Force Unleashed yeah 
Like those, there was something like this. Definitely, I think is plays better and is more fun than those games. Um, yeah, certainly well, the second yeah. one. I didn't even mess with the second one. Yeah, I the beat sec- the first one, and yeah, I would say overall, I think I had a similar experience. But yeah, like this, I, this I, is I an see improvement. what you're saying. There's there is a there is a, an interesting groundwork there. It's it needs so much more though like it does it's so does. very much of this game was based on like we got these three things and we're just gonna ride them uh and really just hope that the story connects with people but it's it's i'm not that hard to please when it comes to star wars right yeah. like i love star wars except you know, episodes two and three and uh a bunch of the clone wars a bunch of the early seasons of the clone wars yeah Outside of that, I'm not that hard to impress. Like, I just need, I just need it to not be Jar Jar Binks and, um, yeah, uh, Hayden Christensen. Really, like, that's that that's kind of it. I need it to make sense. That doesn't need to be like completely everything connects every dot. You now it just slips up ever. It's I need, just need it to make sense and 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 be kind of cool. But for some reason, these most of the games that I've played, which haven't been a lot of them. I just, I don't know why. The video games of Star Wars haven't drawn me in, which is such a weird thing to say because I freaking love Star Wars and video games. Yeah, it, but uh, they haven't been great yet. They've been good, and especially Jedi Fallen Order, it starts off so strong. The narrative ones haven't been great. Like, I freaking loved rogue squadron and rogue squadron 2 i loved tie fighter and x-wing on pc back in the day yeah like i liked I, them that's always but so for me personally those games, but that's always been my least favorite part of star wars i don't hmm. i don't i could not give two shits about the the x-wing fighting scenes and like all that. Oh, I, I love jump, the space i just battles. don't care i love them that's not it's, my thing. I'm I'm here for the uh, I love. <laughs> for the Jewish space wizards. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> and um, like I like that stuff a lot too. And it just like uh the the um, was it the Sega Star Wars arcade game where you like you're using the it's not that complicated, but when you're no, using sure. that joystick to use to swing the lightsaber around, like fighting Darth Vader and whatnot, mm-hmm. that shit was great. But for some reason, like I mean, Force Unleashed was was very obvious why I didn't enjoy that one. It was just. It was a bit of a slog, and yeah. I felt a little bit the same way about Jedi Fallen Order, with like, you know, the wall running and you know, just sliding down things. There's way too much of a focus on like this is a, this is a main mechanic. You're gonna slide down shit. Yeah. You're just gonna get on slopes. You got grease on your shoes. You're just gonna slide <laughs> on shit. And I didn't really like the characters all that much. I I don't. I didn't find Cal all that interesting, and and none of the people he was with was interesting except for the um. The 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 witch from Dathomir. I thought she yeah, was pretty cool. Yeah, I think cool. she's cool. I'd like to see more of her. Um, and the uh, the Inquisitor character, which I can't even remember which one that is now. Uh, I think it was third, third sister, maybe. Yeah, like or fi- no fifth, because third is right. Uh, Reva's Obi-Wan. the third sister. Yeah. Reva's third. Yeah, yeah. She was also <laughs> that was also pretty neat. I liked that trick. You finished Obi Wan, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was a good time. Yeah, I, I, like, I thought it was fucking outstanding. Everyone thought she was overacting in the beginning, because she was. Yeah. <laughs> She's whole... a fucking faker. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody knew it. Yeah. Although I kind of wonder if that one uh, the one that had the rivalry with her actually knew it. Um, he just fucking disappeared, which was... <laughs> that's kind of my... I got two gripes with the Obi-Wan series. I have two main gripes with that show. One... It's over, that, and that well, makes me sad. That's my That gripe. does make me sad. Like that, that the was a whatever brother dude with the mushroom head. Like, yeah, they had a thing going on there. They had the good chemistry of him hating her, and he just disappeared. They did not acknowledge him ever again. <laughs> no, once, uh, once Obi Wan leaves, uh, Rocks of Calico Falipatorius, um, which is not <laughs> what it's called, but every time they say the name of that fucking planet, that's what I hear in my head. Rocks of Calico Falipatorius, um. Which, why the fuck Bana do Cavalada. I know that? Because it's Bana Cavalada. <laughs> Bana Cavalada. Um, <laughs> what? Bana Cavalada. Um, yeah, so, but once Obi-Wan leaves, that, like, once they make their escape, she lets him go, whatever. Um, that was the last you see of him. He was there, like, 
bitching at her at the beginning. Uh huh. And she was like, Vader told me to do this. And he was like, oh shit, daddy said what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, before you go to your gripes, can we take a minute to appreciate the angry dad energy that Vader had in every oh, fucking man. scene? Like, he came storming in like, I've been working all fucking week, and you motherfuckers are driving your mom crazy! Like, that was that was every time I see him walk into his... Because Hayden Christensen is painfully, horribly, wretchedly bad at everything he does. But that... It made me fucking laugh so hard. Because it just... God. It looked like you had roused Dad from a slumber on a Friday afternoon. He has to get out of the Lazy Boy to come up and beat your ass because you won't stop jumping on the bed. The only thing... The only thing that would have made that better if Vader somehow took off a belt. Right? right. <laughs> you can see it, right? Like, just Ross and Storbin in. So I freaking funny. loved that shit. They really oh, got... They really nailed Vader in this one. Just... Mm. Outstanding. What were your gripes, though? Sorry. So that was the one gripe that that, you know, brother never just disappeared, oh. never came back. We never saw more of him. Brother Mushroom. I, yeah, I felt like they were bringing him... The other one... Now, I do not like episodes two or three i don't like them at all but there's a scene in episode two where this this dude uh oh, he's got a really stupid name too i can't remember it but he's like this, that's way dumber stupid fucking name. <laughs> way dumber and it's like bad guy mcbad guy or something like that um, bad guy mcshady face <laughs> He's he's in the in the bar on Coruscant and he's like, you want to say you want to buy some death sticks? And he's oh, like, oh yeah, that no, guy. I want you to go home and rethink your life. I was really hoping Obi Wan was going to run into him and he had went home to rethink his life and he was all like, you know, dad with some kids and nice responsible <laughs> dude. Now, I wanted to see that. That's your gripe. That's my gripe. <laughs> <laughs> That's how outstanding that show was. Is yeah, that I'm you not... made up some shit to be upset about? That's not a serious grape. It just would have been. It just would have been amazing had they done that. No, I, I freaking love that show. No, I, th I thought it was great. I thought it was by far, by far the best that the Star Wars television shit has been. Um, mm. which it doesn't hurt that Ewan McGregor is incredibly talented and handsome. Oh my god, I'd fuck him. Um, <laughs> you would too. Shut up. It's fine. I'm not okay. kicking him out of bed for eating crackers. I'm just saying I'm not actively seeking it out. Um, <laughs> I'm not actively seeking it out, but <laughs> oh, aren't I'm not, you? <laughs> I'm not not actively seeking it out either. <laughs> for being honest, I'm, I'm in my 40s now, Chris. You got to experiment with shit. Keep it fresh. <laughs> um, keep it 100. I don't know what that means. No, I I, I but, really thought it was uh, was really really outstanding, and I thought the. Um, the moment in uh, episode five where Vader grabs the ship out of the air and pulls it back down oh, man. was like, I was so fucking dope. I'm I was so like, excited. Man, how are they going to get out of this one? How th I don't see them. Go oh, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> nice. And like, it's it's really, really funny, too. I, like, I brought this up to Tiff after we got done watching it. I was like, you know, so this is the first time that you really get a sense of like, oh, no, Vader was like legitimately fucking scary. Because in episodes four, five and six, meh, he's not that scary. Right. I mean. Given the time that these the movies were put together, yeah. he definitely has a presence. He has a but, presence, uh, but it's not the way that people cower, you know, or should like. Just the the mythology was greater than the uh, the visuals. Yeah. Um, and you first got a taste of that in Rogue One. Yeah, that fucking it's like oh. Oh, oh shit! shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes after seeing this show, it makes that fucking dude. I don't remember his name, but in episode four, when Vader walks in and he's like, "See, Vader is way better than your Jedi magic bullshit, you twat." <laughs> like whatever he fucking says to him, which I think that was a direct quote. Direct quote. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking goofy wizard shit. Um, I find your lack of faith disturbing. Yeah, like. But you see Vader in this show, and you're like, oh, dude, you really shouldn't have... Like, I knew you shouldn't have said that previously, but like, <laughs> oh, fuck. You're lucky all he did was force choke you a little bit. He ripped a ship in half. 
<laughs> also, I'm super douche. glad they fixed his voice. Because James Earl Jones is old as fuck. Oh, yeah. And like, he's like 93. I love, I love I that think? he's still doing Vader's voice, but he doesn't sound quite the same. Um, it started, it's, it sounded a little off in Rebels, but it was still like just, wow, they got James Earl Jones doing Vader in Star Wars Rebels. This is amazing. Yeah, it's cool. But like, specifically in Rogue One, it sounded so off because yeah. it was just them running his voice through the Vader thing, like usual. But like, his voice is so, he talks slower and his voice voice is deeper now and they fixed that shit up for obi-wan it's like oh he sounds like vader again that makes me so happy yeah i love that they explain the scar on vader's head um once that that final fight with obi-wan as he smashes the mask and you get the hayden christensen talking with the vader voice modulate i thought that was really fucking cool so here's this is another small gripe that i have okay it's a small gripe that scene was great but they did that already. Like I know in, you haven't watched Rebels. No, but in the 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 girl, the, ah, Ahsoka does it, right? Ahsoka, yes. And they did that exact same thing. Yeah. She she cut his helmet open, and then they had the guy who did uh, Anakin's voice in the cartoon mixed with a uh, James Earl Jones voice. It's just the same thing. Cut the mask open. You could see Anakin's face inside. It was the same scene, and yeah. like. It's really cool, but like you did that once already, and but I get why you repeat that one. I get why you repeat it because not everyone's going to watch the cartoons, right? You're just never going to get everyone to watch the cartoons, but no, you're going to get you're way gonna, more people to watch the live action shit. There's a ton of adults who aren't going to watch the cartoon because it's a fucking cartoon. Yeah, which is silly. Which, it is because it's a movie about space wizards, but like you know, and trade wars and whatnot. But like space wizards, yeah. Watch a cartoon, you fuck. Like, what's it's wrong just, with it, you? It was just kind of a uh, kind of a bummer that the scene was so so similar to it. But it also plays into the whole Star Wars. You know, it's it's like poetry thing. And of course, he had. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a hack, George Lucas. It's like he really is. They repeat each other. It's like poetry. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. But like it made it made sense for that interaction to happen with both of those characters. Both it of did. them needed needed to look him in the eye and see it happen. And, and it was really, different sides of the helmet. So there's that. It was different sides of the helmet, and it was a different kind of relationship too. Because yeah. his relationship with Ahsoka was very different from his relationship with. So you know, when he saw Ahsoka again, he wasn't. He didn't try to kill her immediately. It's like I got no beef with you. Like, come on, let's go. <laughs> Just join up. Let's do this shit. And she was like, what the fuck's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, Whereas dick? he's just like furious, ready to kill Obi-Wan, which I still don't 100% buy. Thank you, Revenge of the Sith, for being a fucking shitty movie, but... <laughs> I uh, hate you! Uh, why? You're my why? enemy! Uh, for reasons, because he was reasons. an angry, douchey teenager that wasn't happy that he he didn't get what he thought he deserved which was the title of Master, and somebody came around and was like, those Jedi are fucking dicks, and I'm going to save your wife's life just like you couldn't do for your mommy. And, like, it makes sense to a point, but nah. not not to the point, not enough sense. No. And they've done, they did a lot of great work fixing that up in the, the Clone Wars and stuff, yeah. and, and foreshadowing and whatnot, but they're really, they're really just doing their best to polish what I consider to be a a, a steaming turd. But you oh, know, uh, the, the, the retroactive the... prequel love right now is so through the roof. And honestly, it's so I'm stupid. happy. I'm happy for Hayden Christensen because he seems like a very nice guy. He does seem I... like a genuinely nice person. Exactly, and like I, he, I respect the shit out of what he did for this show because he went through and watched all of uh, Clone Wars to yeah, learn like more he about. He studied, whereas the guy who played the Inquisitor was just like, no, I want to bring something fresh to the characters. Like, the character exists. What do you mean bring something fresh? You t you want to bring something fresh to Jason Isaac's performance? <laughs> you How know, I'm going to be JFK in this new movie, but I'm going to play him different. I'm going to give him a Brooklyn accent instead yeah. of Boston. The, you have an established character. Don't bring something new to it. Play the character that exists. Yeah. You jerk. This isn't but, fucking whatever. Shakespeare. He was still kind of fun. I just thought his head was really doughy and dopey yeah. looking, but whatever. Yeah. Whatever. That was fine. It was fine. Everything's fine. I'm just saying the prequel love is insane. Everyone loves Hayden Christensen. I'm like, no. I think the guy's nope. 
I think he seems like a nice guy, but I cannot. Well, I have such a hard time stomaching his performance, and I, 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 it's I awful. Don't wanna, I don't want to be mean. I just don't think it's good. I don't enjoy it. It is not my bag of tea. It's nobody's bag of tea. Oh, they, they love it. They love it. No, they don't. They love it. They do. They well, they're convincing themselves that they do. I don't know. <laughs> it, I'm not. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know people's I, minds. Like I said, I genuinely, and we've talked about this, I genuinely enjoy episode three. Um, mostly because that lightsaber fight is so incredible. It's so incredible that I can kind of tune out the rest of it um, and just I don't wait, get that at wait all. for that moment. I don't understand why that lightsaber fight is considered so incredible. I, it's just fucking cool. They so just fast. stop in the middle of it and start twirling their swords around for no reason at all. They're not trying to hit each other. They're just like, look how cool this is. I mean, that's kind of every lightsaber fight, thing. though. Like, yeah, no, no, they're usually trying to hit each other. This is literally, they're just standing next to each other, twirling around for no reason. I oh, don't know. I think it's cool. Fucking looking. stupid. It is stupid. I have the high ground. Hello okay. <laughs> I, I, ah. Yeah, it, it's a horrible dog shit movie. The entire prequel <laughs> trilogy is terrible. I know you like episode one. That's a fucking bad movie. Oh, 100% agree, but it's I can enjoy that one. Bad movie. It's It's got an... I feel like that one, the good outweighs the bad. Not by a lot. No, there's too <laughs> much Jar Jar in that one. If I could just have somebody revoice Jar Jar, if I could just nope. redub all those lines and nope. take out the poop jokes, nope. then you're fine. No fixing that. There's no fixing it. You can't no. redub it. But if you did, if he didn't talk like a moron, it would be okay. If he didn't talk like a racial stereotype moron, yeah, well, it would be okay. Not good, okay. But yeah. the the Wado love story problematic. Being com- oh yeah, the fucking the, <laughs> the age fucking discrepancy trip. between uh, the little kid Jake Lloyd was that uh-huh. his name? Yeah, the Jake age Lloyd discrepancy and, uh, yeah. that it because I know they were close in age when they filmed it, right? I'm not crazy uh-huh. there. Yeah, the way it looks on screen is creepy as fuck. It's like he was nine and she was fourteen. I believe is the. Uh... Yeah, that's re- that's fucking weird. Yeah, that's weird. That's I mean, fucking granted, weird. And it's like, space. I don't know how shit works in space. Nah, dude, that's <laughs> fucking weird and predatory. Like it's yeah, very, it's... very strange. But like and that was it. She wasn't. She wasn't coming on to him that movie. She wasn't coming on to him in the second movie until all of a sudden, I love you deeply. Like no, you fucking don't. Since no, you don't. when? What are you talking about? I killed them. This has been dead fish Not the entire the time. Zero the chemistry. Children. Cool. I don't like animals. Don't <laughs> like sand. I- <laughs> mm. Anyway, mm. so Jedi Fallen Order is okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's some good groundwork there. I would rather for- play it than watch Attack of the Clones. <laughs> yeah, for, oh, for sure. For sure. Except for the Yoda scene. Because I don't give a fuck. That shit's dope. That shit's awesome in a bottle. I just don't like yep. what it does for the rest of the series. Sorry, I can talk Star Wars all day, every day. So we're no, gonna, I know, we're gonna, gotta I know. Move on. Gotta so move I, on. I, anyway, so I almost finished with that. Um, <laughs> fuck, I don't even remember if I've done anything else. The Star Wars collab finished in. Uh, speaking of Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars collab finished in Puzzle and Dragons. Um, got all the shit that I wanted. The only two uh, big characters that I didn't pull were Boba Fett and Han Solo. Uh, Boba Fett. But I'm, where? <laughs> but <laughs> <fuck you. laughs> but, but I'm, I would never use them. Like I would never ever use them. I pulled uh I pulled Obi Wan who is just fucking amazing in this game. Um Luke is really cool, but it really, really bothers me because the the artwork the names for the artwork is backwards. Like and I don't know how they fucked it up. The the one picture is um, Bespin Luke when he's got the the tan jumpsuit, right? Yeah. That's Bespin. I'm gonna say yes, I think okay. so. Um, that and he's holding. Yep. He has the blue yeah. lightsaber, right? So Bespin Luke with the blue lightsaber. Um, he still because he still has his father's lightsaber. He, he doesn't have the green one yet. Um, and it says the card is called <laughs> Luke Skywalker. Okay, his evolution in the game is him. <laughs> 
in his X-Wing fighter pilot suit, and he's holding a blaster. Okay? Hmm. And the title of that card is Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. And it fucking drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. Yeah, that's weird. I Because I don't care, like, if he wasn't a Jedi Knight it, when, like, it, I just, fuck you. The guy with the card with the lightsaber should be the one that says Jedi Knight on it, not the fucking X-Wing suit. <laughs> but I digress. Um, Rey is really, really good. Uh, it's kind of weird that she gets some of the same hate uh, from uh, certain circles uh, <laughs> online. There is some toxicity towards her in the game. She's a fucking dope card, and uh, that character is uh, wrongly maligned. I feel both in Puzzle and Dragons and in the uh, larger Star Wars universe. Um, so that finished up. Uh, the My Hero Academia collab started today, which was another one that people were like, again, people who know uh, these things somehow uh, when they're just schmucks on the internet like me. Uh, it's never fucking coming. Gung Ho doesn't care about North America, blah, blah, blah. Well, here it fucking is. So, you know, <laughs> roll it, you dick. Um, which it's okay. I'm not spending a ton of resources on it because I just don't know my hero academia all that well. I tried watching it. It was okay. And that was kind of where I left it. I was like, ah, this is all right. I don't hate this, but I don't need to watch any more than these like four <laughs> or five episodes I've watched. I'm good. And then, oh God, I think that's about it. We got, no, uh, more turtles. We're almost, we just, shit's been going on. Tiff's been, like, working doubles and all, and we're trying to beat the game as a family. So that has been, like, on the back burner until she is not working doubles because uh, people have COVID at the daycare and all of that stuff. Uh, we did just buy Unpacking because uh, it was on sale, so she's going to play that this week, and I will report back uh, next week as we move, as we, uh, move through there. Uh, maybe we should have gotten that game for your sister. <laughs> I, don't know. I want that game. It's been on yeah, my wish list for a little I'm while I'm really, now. really excited to see see what happens with it. Because, yeah, like... I'm I, looking forward to unpacking it? Yeah, I'm looking forward to unpacking <laughs> the, um, the fucking gameplay. I don't know. There was a lot of really good wrestling this week that took me away from things, too, Chris. Hmm. AEW New Japan Forbidden Door was last night. It was like a fucking solid three and a half hours of like AEW and New Japan crossed over. It was fucking great. It was great. Yeah, I've just been distracted by lots of TV myself. Between Obi-Wan and The Boys and Umbrella Academy. How was Umbrella Academy? I did not care for the first season, so I haven't watched it past that. Oh, I, I rather... If you didn't like the first season, you probably won't like the rest of them either. Uh, I thought the first season was great, and I am enjoying the new season as well. It's got a couple of writing issues, I think. Uh, just some of the characters are acting a bit more stupid than they should be to mm. further the plot, but other than that, uh, I'm I'm enjoying the heck out of it. And, uh, yeah, I loved Obi-Wan, obviously, and... Uh, oh, we boys, should talk about that. The, the boys has been excellent. Um, yeah, I got, yeah, I got to start the boys, and I also have to start Miss Marvel. We haven't started Miss Marvel. Yet. Oh my god, Miss Marvel's been great too. That's, that's what that's I've the heard. Other one. Yeah. We were we were waiting to finish Obi Wan, and then Tiff got stuck like working all these doubles and shit. To where like when I say double, she's getting up at five o'clock in the morning, and she's getting home at seven thirty. Uh. So like, <laughs> it's it's a long day. She gets home. I throw some food at her. Some of it gets in her mouth, and then she goes to bed. Like, that's been the last week or so. Like, fuck Oof. it, I'll eat tomorrow. Alright, that's fair. Yeah, so I guess I haven't played a ton of games because of all the TV I've been watching. Um, Alright, did you play the one I bought you, you prick? Not yet. I no, haven't had time, you prick! I haven't had time to actually play a game for a little while. I mean, no, I know. I'm just obviously I'm doing stuff with John. We're still working on Minecraft Dungeons, which is really fun. Um, I we pl I played through all of Ducktales remastered with him, which was super fun. Uh, I just we just finished that nice. today, because uh, that game still rules. We were down here in the basement for some reason. I just we had we started watching the Ducktales, the new Ducktales cartoon has been my pick for family night uh, nice. the last couple of weeks, 
So we're just kind of working our way through that because I never finished it because the kids lost interest a while, you know, back when it was airing, but it's been a year uh, and they're way more into it now. So we're all enjoying that. And I was like, turned on the DuckTales game. Like, there's a DuckTales game. I was like, oh, yeah, there's a DuckTales game. <laughs> Hell yeah, there is. <laughs> Played through like a couple levels, couple of levels on the NES and then uh, we went upstairs and did the uh, the remastered one on Wii U and that was a lot of fun. So we finished that today. Yeah, that um, game is so good. It really is. Uh, I mean, he's really been into Cobra Triangle because uh, that I had like <laughs> I had like five minutes to play something, and so I just turned on the Xbox and uh, Rare Replay, and I uh, just started playing Cobra Triangle. It's like this is awesome. And he's this is amazing. It's like yeah, it is. <laughs> so he's been like You're listening to music, wrong, sir. watching YouTube videos of boss rushes and stuff. It's like okay, cool, have fun. Um, I got to try out. I finally got my hands on some retro receivers. Ape it, dude, does these uh retro yeah. receivers um i got one for nes and one for super nes i got them from stone age gamer they're available now uh and i give us finally, your money i've had the 8-bit do uh snes was snes 40 controller for eons a couple yeah. of years i bought it to use with my mini consoles um but i don't even have those hooked up anymore and I was like, wait a minute, I could use this for, like, everything. <laughs> so I finally got the retro receivers, and I used them on my NES and my Super NES down here. And it's like, nice. oh, this is great. I can finally play these wireless like a jackass, because I haven't forever. <laughs> <sighs> so that's been fun. Uh, just poking around a lot of NES stuff. Um, I tried the Klonoa demo that dropped on the Switch. What'd you think? Uh, it was pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna buy it. Um, it didn't. It didn't wow me. Uh, I haven't tried the Klonoa two demo yet because it's both one and two. So I just tried the first game, and you know we liked that that Game Boy Advance one we played for the show a year or so ago. Yeah, uh, that was, I really was, like Klonoa. It was pretty good, and like I liked this demo. I didn't just it didn't floor me. Um, sure, but it was. I can't it was imagine it was good. going to though. Well, like I can't like imagine what a Klonoa love game. This game. Sure, but they're. They've got to be like lifelong fans of the series that didn't yeah. think they were going to get more. Like I can't imagine how good a Klonoa demo would have to be for you to be over the moon, or at least enough to genuinely Sorry, convince me I have yeah. to buy it. Like that, that's right. just it. It it was like I would like to play through this and see if I can really grasp what it is that people love about this. But I think there's I think a lot of it has to do with the story and the characters that don't connect with me the way that they connect with other anime fans. Sure. Right? It's very anime type of thing, and it's... I like a decent amount of anime, but this one just doesn't connect with me. So, I don't know, I'm gonna try the, um, uh, the Klonoa 2 part when I get a chance, but obviously I have you, other things to, to You to like play. a little bit more, um, and I mean this with the utmost respect, um, because it's the same one that I like. Um, although I do like Klonoa a little bit more than you. Um, you like dumb boy anime in the same I way guess? that I do. Yeah, like, what's your favorite anime series of all time? Probably Trigon. That's dumb boy anime. Like, it is. That's okay. Not sure what that means, but okay. Uh, if you, tri that's Trigon how... is Call of Duty. Like, not uh... in the messaging or anything like that, but it is. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand the connection at all. In this, like, I, it's, I, it's just, it's, everybody likes it. Everybody fucking likes Trigon. Like, that doesn't make it bad, that doesn't make you bad or anything like that, but you and I, what are the, what's the anime that you and I like? We like Trigon, we like Cowboy Bebop, we like Dragon Ball Z, yeah. we like mm -hmm. Fooly Cooly, you know, like, it's just boy anime. Just teenage boy, dumb boy anime. I don't mean that as mean as it sounds. I'm just not seeing the connection. That's I, I. I'm not sure I get it. But oh, so he, Klonoa regardless. is not dumb boy anime. So it's never going to be for you and me the way that it is for other people. I guess, but like, yeah. it's a cute character. I know what I'm platformer. talking about. Like, <laughs> it's 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 a cute character platformer. I feel like I should like it, but it doesn't. I don't find it as fun to play as something like Kirby or Mario, and. I think sure. that's where the disconnect really is for me, but I don't know. I don't know. It hasn't. It didn't click with me, but I did really enjoy the Game Boy Advance one, and I liked the basic mechanics of this one. I like the way he says "wahoo," <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. 
Maybe it just needs a little bit more time to connect. I will find out. Um, on our Mega Man journey, we've slowed down a bit. We finally finished Mega Man 4. He doesn't want to really do the Game Boy ones on the 3DS anymore. Okay. But that's fine, so I can play them on my TV downstairs, and I think we'll get through them that way. Nice. Because uh, I have the I have those actual cartridges. I couldn't... <clears throat> I can't get my Raspberry Pi to work anymore, so... Huh. I don't know what's up with that. Now it's not outputting sound, so that thing's always been weird ever since I got it. I think I just need to invest in a new one someday. <laughs> Throw it against the wall, see if that helps. <laughs> my ship works better when I kick it. Uh, I got some... So, uh, for review stuff for the site, I got um, a set of level height cables for like pretty much every system. I think these things are neat. Uh, a lot of people hate on them because they're not like super high quality. But they're also pretty cheap ways of connecting your things to TVs through HDMI. Yeah. But what I learned about was that I didn't realize that they made one for PSP. Ooh, I like that. So I finally got that one, and it's the what's for the two thousand and up, right? Because I don't think the one thousand had the AV out. I don't think so. No. It just it's kind of weird because it's you have to plug in it. it the The unit itself has to be plugged in, like the uh, the the level like little processor thingy. Okay. And then and then you just connect one end to your the bottom of the PSP, and the other end is just an HDMI cable. And, you know, it's not the most amazing picture quality ever, but the, you know, it, ne it never was coming out of the PSP itself. No, sure. Like, um, but I played, like, a little bit of Mega Man Powered Up on my TV today. And That's then I cool. played a little bit of Castlevania, uh, Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles. And, like, they look good. The, uh, the me it's weird, because the menus look awful. The actual really? PSP, the PSP home menu looks huh. atrocious. And I was like, oh, this is... This is not good. <laughs> this is but not going to be a good experience. Th this is this is not going to be good. But then once the game started up, it was a, like a totally different resolution. It was like, huh. okay, this looks this looks pretty good. Not amazing, but I was also like sitting four inches away from my TV because my PSP battery was dead, so I had to have <laughs> that plugged into the wall, and the closest outlet I had was like not quite far enough away from the TV to make it, you know, comfortable. <laughs> so Yeah, sure. I need to work this out. I think I might actually need to get an HDMI extension cable so I can sit all the way back on my couch and play this. But either way... I feel like that would be, for PSP, I, I feel like that would be better plugged into, like, a computer monitor. Probably. You know, not blowing it up to 70 inches or whatever, like... Honestly, you know. it didn't look bad. It just looked bad super up close. I was, like, maybe three feet away from the TV at best. Yeah, <laughs> nothing really looks good <laughs> nothing that's not properly designed for hd looks all that great at that close no uh, sure but no sure. it it really sharpens up once the game started um so both those games look that's pretty cool. cool and yeah I, they sent me one for dreamcast and stuff too that i'm gonna mess around with but the psp one was the one that i just had to get my hands on yeah that's really cool just the I fact that you can yeah it's cool the fact that i can finally play Mega Man powered up on my tv makes me just so very happy yeah I downloaded demos for uh, a game called Thomas Was Alone and oh, Super Mega Thomas Zero. I Thomas Was Alone. I've heard so many good things about that game, yeah. and I thought Super Mega Zero looked super cool, and I haven't tried them yet, but I did download the demos for them, and I did download Death's Door that you gave me, and one of our listeners sent me a copy yeah. of Mario Strikers, which I haven't tried yet because a... Th so they ordered it through Amazon. They ordered it through, I think, a third-party seller. And mm -hmm. he showed me like what he ordered because I, I post a picture in our discord like, so I got a European copy of uh, Mario Strikers. <laughs> uh, did anybody give this to me? And then eventually somebody sent me a message and told, told me that they gave it to me. They're like, but I didn't order in a European one. They showed me the receipt and everything. And it was like, that's a picture of the North American one. And I'm like, this ain't that. And. You know me, I'm a nut for that kind of thing, especially since this one has a literal different title. It's called, Does it really? It's called Mario Strikers Football Battle League. Oh, shit. It's got a whole different name. The writing on the spine is in the middle and lowercase, like the other European stuff. It's like, I'm just going to exchange it. It's fine. He sent a gift receipt with it, so I'm just going to... I did the return. Now, as soon as that, that return processes, I'll just use that store credit to buy it again probably direct from amazon and hopefully they don't send me a european copy <laughs> i hope freaking weird i don't know what other version could they send you send me a japanese one 
No, God, I hope they send you, like, like a fucking Kerblockistan copy of it. Which I suppose would still be European, but something weird. I don't know, that'd be fun. You're gonna fucking love Thomas Was Alone. I'm excited that for game, it. That game, I think I talked about that game. I'm, I'm looking at pictures of it again because I loved it so much. Um, I talked about that game when I, I played this when I was living in Corpus Christi. So that was early days of the podcast, like seven years ago. Wow. Yeah. Huh. It's so good. It's yeah, so I'm pretty good. stoked to stoked to give it a try. It's a uh, I you've talked about it and other people have talked about it too and I can't picture who, but I've definitely heard a lot about it and it seems interesting. So uh, it's just it's so smart, it's so clever. The right it's charming, the writing is wonderful. Uh oh, it's heartbreaking, like it's just it's everything. It's a great fucking game. Nice. I wanted to mention that uh Today, as we're recording this, uh, is... Actually, no, I'll do this one first. On Father's Day, I think I mentioned this before, but I wanted to talk a little bit more in depth on it. Uh, I got some time to myself to play my Super Scope. Yes. I had some time to myself, I didn't know what to do, and I was like, you know what? I should play something I never get to play, and I'm gonna bust out my Super Scope. So I beat Battle Clash, uh, Falcon's Revenge... And, like, the first level or two of Yoshi's Safari before, you know, eventually kids were like, Attention! Give to me! <laughs> so, but I freaking love the Super Scope. I freaking love that thing. It's such a fun... Those games, especially Battle Clash 1 and 2, are still so much fun. I uh, just, just can't say enough good things about them. Yeah, no, that, it was such a cool peripheral. So, so cool. I mean, and, and without the scope, the games lose a little bit of something. But I would just, sure. I would just love to see them recreate those games somehow. Like, I just want to play my light gun games. The, the Wii was the perfect time to do all that stuff. Yeah, but that's you know that that ship sailed. And aiming with the Joy-Con is okay, but it's not quite right. You know what I mean? Like, without yeah. that sensor bar, it just isn't. It just isn't the same. But, uh, you know, here we are. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... Yeah. You know, that... unless, you're, unless you're doing PlayStation Move with the giant ball, but even then, that's, that's how that worked. Like, that's the reason that was able to work as well, because it had that giant glowy orb thing on the end of it. Like, mm -hmm. you just gotta do something. I don't mind having a sensor bar plugged into the TV. Oh, that was something that really bugged me out. We've been... Had the Wii U up in the living room for so damn long, yeah. and, like, the the using the Wii remote on that has always been like super janky and I guess I just kind of forgot that it used to be really precise mm -hmm. when I used it back in the old days so I hooked up my original Wii to my CRT and using the pointer is flawlessly smooth and I'm like oh <laughs> right this is how I played games like Skyward Sword with no problems at all because yeah. I had a setup like this and that fucking worked and didn't really work that well elsewhere. But regardless, the most important thing is that today that we recorded is the 50th anniversary of Atari. Oh, I thought you were going to say the 20th anniversary of John Cena, but all right. No, but apparently he likes Metroid. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he loves Metroid. Big fan. Big fan of the show. Yeah, John oh, Cena. for sure. <laughs> Love John Cena. Can't see me. I can, John, every week. Can't stop but seeing you. No, yeah, 50, the, uh, that's the 50th crazy. anniversary of Atari. That's pretty great. I, uh, I, I've, I love Atari. Do I'm, you? You've I, never, I do. I've never, literally mentioned never <laughs> mentioned it on the podcast. Four hundred and episodes in, you've never brought up Atari. You talk about it in television a lot. I do. I never love in brought, television. Never <laughs> brought up Atari. Just the biggest fan. <laughs> yeah, there's this guy I know, Ferg. He does this really good podcast about Atari. You should check it out. He's a nice guy too, Baker. The Very Intellivision Game by Game podcast? Yeah, it's a <laughs> the, the Intellivision Game podcast. Just talk about <laughs> one. That's it. No, I'm like, this is a bad idea. Anyway, sorry. My bad. But, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot more to say about it other than, uh, you know, I think no, Atari awesome. 2600 was great. The, I, I'm glad the company is doing something now. You know, I haven't played much of my VCS as expected. Sure. Um, I just don't have a ton of 
time or really there's not a lot of games I need to play on it regularly. I'm still really glad I bought it, but uh I felt like they were supposed to announce something today and I totally missed it. Uh I saw today that they were like five or six games coming to Stadia, which is not a very big announcement. I don't know if that was what? it. That's all I saw. Yeah. Stadia is still a thing? Apparently. I don't know, or apparently Atari's trying to make it a thing again. I have no idea. That's, That's what I saw, though. Confusing. Uh, okay, but... Well, anyway, they're making some neat games. Uh, they're also still doing, you know, weird NFT shit, so that's like... They're almost there. They're, uh... They're, uh, they're not as bad as they could be. <laughs> they're not as bad it, as in television. It just makes me sad, because I feel like Atari at this point, should be kind of like what Devolver Digital is. That would be pretty cool. You know, like, find these really interesting, you know, maybe underfunded indie games and, you know, like, really creative and clever, interesting titles. Like, because that... What the fuck was that game that we liked, we talked about last week, that Devolver showed? The the heroes coming off the cup and... Plucky Squire. That fe- felt like an Atari game to me. Like, that wouldn't wouldn't you be so much more excited to see that with the Atari logo on it? Yeah, like, I wouldn't suppose. Wouldn't that feel right? I don't know why. That feels right to me. Let's see. Uh, the uh, There's a th- big sale on the VCS. Yeah, Atari Recharged is coming to Google Stadia. What? Why is this... Why is this a thing? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't even know Stadia was still... Happening. I really... Th- I, I thought Stadia was done, or, like, Google had kind of given up on it. But that's all so I'm too. seeing. Like, this Atari Mania game looks really interesting. Yeah. It's like a WarioWare with Atari stuff. Like, that that's seems really pretty cool. interesting. Yeah. Um... I'm scrolling through their Twitter to see uh, their announcements, but I'm, the Stadia one seems to be hmm. the big thing. Atari games are releasing on Google Stadia Pro. I don't get it. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't get it. I don't know. It just seems like yeah, because there's there's not a ton of like Atari legacy projects. That could be, like, for our 50th anniversary, we're bringing a new... Bleh, whatever, you know? Because so much of... Not not all, certainly, but a lot of what was popular on the Atari was other people's shit. Yeah. You know? So, like, the uh, Atari Legacy stuff, you know, would people freak out for a new adventure... Maybe, but, like, how do you update that and keep keep the same charm and sense of wonder? You make the fucking plucky squire. You know what I mean? Like, that, that to me, feels like a, a thing. I don't know. I'm just rambling. No, I get it. I, I, I don't know that I necessarily feel plucky squire uh, is 100% Atari, but at the same time, like, I would like Atari... I would like to feel that way. I would like Atari to be doing more stuff like what they're doing, but I like the approach that they're taking of having things be very simple arcade focused, like mm-hmm. they're doing, like with Combinera is a great example of that. Um, there was another one that they just released. Now I can't remember the name of it. And then they've got this weird Atari mania, WarioWare looking type game. Like I like these kinds of things. Their recharge series are, really good ways of doing what they're what they should be doing and having them focus on bringing these kinds of games to market now with modern iterations of older things or just modern takes on old simple formats that's that's a great niche for atari to be in i just wish they weren't also balls deep in shit like nfts like (laughs) I just wish they would knock that shit off. Like they're try they're they're trying to like they're doing an okay job being a video game company, 
but they also really want to be a lifestyle company. And yeah. I don't, I, it's that part of it is so gross. I just wish it would, I wish they would just go all in on being a game company again, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. 50 years though, 50 years ago, Atari was founded. That's freaking crazy. That's pretty awesome. Well, I think that's all I have. It's all freaking right. 10 o'clock. We haven't even started yet. <laughs> <sighs> this is what happens, man. I'm very sorry. Yeah. I still have to... I. Uh, we still don't know when that freaking physical copy of uh, Shredder's Revenge is shipping out, right? Eventually. Like, there's there's still no word on it, though I think there's probably they're probably waiting on some patches and stuff to finish uh, so that they can put it all on the, on the cart, but... Right. Like, I really want to play through that with my family, and I still only have the two Xbox controllers, so it's like... Yeah. It's okay, I'll get to it eventually. Playing through it that one time was great, but... All right, we're going to take ourselves a break. <laughs> when we come back... I mean, back, you really want to go down this this rabbit hole now? Oh, sure, what why are the not? D, what are the DLC characters you want in fucking... Shredder's oh, God, Revenge? you want to do that one? Oh, That's what I'm yeah. Talking. I want Usagi Yojimbo. I wrote a whole thing. That was my blog post for last week. Where the oh, hell is see, it? Oh, see, I don't read your shit. I'm a bad oh, friend. Oh, man, you would have loved that one. Yeah, that was my, my <laughs> blog post for last week, was uh, Shredder's Revenge DLC. So here's who I want. Uh, now, obviously, if you're going to do DLC for Shredder's Revenge, you got to expand beyond the original cartoon series, like, in my humble opinion. So I, what I would love is to see characters from other iterations of Ninja Turtles done in the, the this uh, style. This style, right? Mm -hmm. So I want, I want Jenica, because okay. she's great in new comics. Yeah. Uh, I want Venus. Okay. Uh, because, and, and not specifically the Venus from the next mutation because uh, uh, <laughs> just, uh, uh, but they just introduced Venus into the comics in a really interesting way okay and she's super cool so I would love to see that obviously Usagi Yojimbo just, just come on <laughs> yeah I, I don't like that just I'm sad it's not already in there uh, agreed if we're being honest uh, they already did the Toad characters as background characters, so I'm going to say yep. Mon Mondo Gecko would be great. Oh, he was so in the cartoon. Uh, there's, I would prefer his cartoon iteration because it already exists, but like his his redesign in the current comic book is a lot smaller. Okay, uh, I think he's, he's such a cool character in that in the new show, or sorry, the new comic. But um, yeah, just give me the classic Mondo Gecko. Uh, I would like the Angel. Uh, character Angel slash Nobody. Okay. Um, and the new comic book, Angel, is... Uh, so, sh she originally appeared in the 2003 animated series. She was, friend like, a, had some yeah. sort of a relationship with Casey's, Casey, but um, in the current comic book, she's about the same age as Casey, and she eventually gets armor, then becomes Nobody, uh, which would be a super fun character to play as in the game. She's mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Karai, but specifically the iteration of Karai from the 2012, uh, series, where she okay. was, um, yeah. cause she was, in that show, she was actually Hamato Yoshi's daughter, but she didn't yes. know that until, like, halfway through the series, which was a super awesome, uh, take on that character. I think that would be super cool. Uh, I would like to see Alopex, also from the, uh, IDW run, because she's a fox, and she's also officially part of Clan Hamato, which is the, the, the group. She has a green bandana, which is awesome so she's she's a snow fox and she would be an amazing character but my best my best pick is kino from ninja turtles to the secret of the years <laughs> yep i'm in give Sold. me kino <laughs> so i might have like ernie that Race more than jr. usagi <laughs> have ernie race jr do the voice do it all that would be amazing <laughs> <laughs> that would be dope. See, like, I would definitely want, like, screen, uh, Wingnut and screw loose in there as well, but, like, but he's already in there. Yeah. Kind of, you know, like, but I want the hero version. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, don't, I don't, he's not a bad guy. Like, Just I would have said, you like... a bad guy does not make you a bad guy. I would have said Irma and Vernon, but, like, they're already in there as NPCs. Like, yeah. Okay. Uh, I really wanted the neutrinos, um, but again, they're in there already. So, like, yeah. those specific characters are already done. So, hmm. but, right, give, you know, me, give me that, Usagi or Jimbo. That, yeah. that is my number one. Usagi and Kino are, like, my, my, my two big ones. 
all the um, Usagi and Kino and maybe Jenica because we talked about that when me and uh, Jonathan Holmes interviewed uh, uh, Kevin Eastman. We were talking yeah. about the game and we were like, you know, how cool would it be to see someone like Jenica in that game? And he's like, oh, that would be really cool. So <laughs> obviously it didn't happen, but I would love to see it. But anyway, all right. All right. Well, no, I'm sorry. One more thing. Okay. Did you finish Last Ronin? Yes. What did you think? It was good. That's it? Just good. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. It. I... it was it was good. It was very good. I I enjoyed it all the way through. It made me kind of sad, but I think that was the point. Yeah. And um yeah. I liked it a lot. I liked the uh, I liked the uh, Casey's yeah, Casey was a KB, Casey and April's kid, right? Those, yeah. It's, it's actually now been a little while since I've read Casey it. Casey Marie Jones. The details. Yeah. I liked I liked her. Uh no, it was was solid stuff. It was. Did you was, think the choice? Can we can we talk about it? Are we allowed to talk about it? Yeah, why not? It's been out I, for a while now. Did you think the choice of Mikey was the right choice? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no question. I did too. I was just wondering if you had. A, I was curious if you disagreed. No, I would have been shocked no. if you disagreed, but I I think that's that's exactly. The, the the one to do this story with um it's the only having, one you could right like it's the one that would mean the most you know yeah. he was always the 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 fun loving goofball and now life has forced him to be serious and it's heartbreaking but at the same time it it it, it works it really works yeah, yeah. it was very right. good i liked it i liked it quite a bit cool it was good solid all right, now we're going to take ourselves a break. And when we come back, uh, we're going to do the <laughs> no, time 20, 30, 40. For you. And we're going to do it as quickly as we can, because unlike some people, I still have to work. <laughs> Sucker. You're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from Geekade.com. Stick around. And now, here's a quick look at some of the other original content, available now from our partners and Geekade.com. First up, the homies over at the Weekend Rental Podcast remember a time when mini consoles were all the rage. Be it a Commodore 64 or an NES, companies were miniaturizing all their retro machines for the good of all mankind. With Sega announcing a second Mini Genesis recently, there's no better time to talk about the mini console trend that came and went, and how they feel about them today. Plus, all the latest on Ryan's vacation so far, wonderful Father's Day weekends, and more. Don't miss Weekend Rental episode 128, The Gamers Think Small. Next, one of the coolest things that's ever happened in the world of video games is the evolution from 8 to 16-bit gaming, according to me. Watching so cool. our favorite games spring to life with new, brighter colors, better graphics, and mind-blowing sound was a real trip. But sometimes, instead of making the jump to the next generation, companies decided to throw a bone to the old NES faithful. And unfortunately, sometimes those games got lost in the shuffle. This, uh, this time in the gratuitous rainbow spectrum, I take a look at those NES sequels that flew under the radar, for better or worse. Check out NES sequels no one played over on the Stone Age Gamer YouTube channel. I'm talking like DuckTales 2 sort of yeah, stuff? Yeah, DuckTales 2, Rad Racer 2. Yeah, Rad uh, Racer 2's good. It's really okay. It's kind of a step down for the first one. It's fine. Yeah, but, uh, I like it, it though. It's weird, it's different. It's not. There's only one car. Yeah, it's well, got most of the same tracks. It's got like it's RC weird. Pro-Am 2. Now well, that's that, a winner. That's, that's a whole... huge step forward. Rad yeah. Racer 2 is like, it's good. And if you liked Rad Racer, play this one. But it's like, <laughs> it's effectively the same thing again with a little bit better graphics. I don't know. That was a weird, weird pick. But, yeah, uh, I, like I still though. pointed it out because it's an interesting game that I don't know anybody who's played. Like, Nobody ever talked about Rad Racer 2. Somebody oh. on our, uh, uh, in the comments just posted, I was, I, was, I was hoping to see the Lolo series get a mention. I was like, that's a that's a great one. Lolo 3 would have been a great one to talk about. I just totally, totally spaced on it. Yeah, but you've got more videos to make. I do. It's a lot of pressure. Finally, on this week's episode of this week's episode, Chris is once again getting us caught up and current with all the Tiwi news. 
Karen likes small butts and she cannot lie, which is why we've never gotten along. Angie is super excited to see Aloy on TV. And Evan is surprisingly, thankfully quiet for once. Be sure I didn't write that. That's fucked up that you wrote that about Evan. Be sure to catch all this and so much more on this week's episode, episode 255. That is not America's ass. What's amusing enough is that Evan wrote that. <laughs> That's how he, he did not. He kind of did. I mean, this was his episode description that I basically copy-pasted for the commercial, and then you added an adjective for it. Yeah, Evan, was, Evan wasn't even how, there. How dare you accuse me of being an old adjective adder from around the way. That is a fucking hyenas accusation, sir. Hyenas. Hyenas. It's slanderous. Not and chicanerous. For all this and more from us and our partners, be sure to keep your eyes on geekade.com. All right, everybody, we're back, and uh, it is time for us to do uh, the 10, 20, 30, 40. Yeah, I, let's do it. Realizing now I didn't really finish my script for this week, and that's okay. Uh, <laughs> We've been doing this so long, we never fuck up anymore. <laughs> it's fine. It's Everything's fine. fine. All this is um, fine. Let's see. Uh, also, just for poops and giggles, apparently tomorrow's going to be a, a Nintendo Direct. Um, a Nintendo Direct Mini with third-party things. Like, Ooh. boy, they're very specifically not giving people what they thought they were getting for yeah. E3 this year. Like, no, for no sure. General Direct. None. No, you're nope. going to get Xenoblade Chronicles, and then you're going to get some third-party stuff you probably won't care about. But maybe <laughs> you should. I got Don't my fingers like crossed. Fuck off. I got my fingers crossed for Portal news because, like, they announced that, and and I want it. Oh yeah, and then really, they, there's been like really no mention. It. Yeah, it's just been like, all right, it's coming out, but we have no release date yet. Stay tuned, and like, it's coming out on everything. I I just want it, and and I want it physical too. So I, I don't even mind waiting a little longer if somebody's going to make it physically. I don't know. We'll see, but that's my big hope for tomorrow. But anyway, ten, twenty, thirty, forty. Where my spreadsheet at? Here we go. Uh, let's start in <laughs> 2012. At, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this fairly quickly. All right. No. Not gonna waste a lot of time. You know why? Why? Because there are not a lot of games worth wasting time on this Aww. month. Bunch of games. So all right. PS3. We're looking at PS3, Xbox 360, Wii, 3DS, PSP, and Vita. So these are the systems that were primarily out and about. PS3 had a lot of titles. We have Bang Bang Racing, Babel Rising, Brave, The Amazing Spider-Man, Inversion, Game of Thrones, Dirt Showdown, Madagascar 3, Lollipop yes. Chainsaw, Ma yes. Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Lego Batman 2, DC Superheroes, Le Tour de France 2012, <laughs> Jeremy McGrath's Off-Road, London Olympics 2012, Virtual Fighter 5 Final Showdown, Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles, Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles, and Spec Ops The Line. <sighs> Lollipop Chainsaw, that's a big winner. Lollipop Chainsaw is great. Game is so uh, weird, and it's expensive now, too. Is I it? remember you could find huh. that game for like nothing. Yeah, I believe it didn't it's sell a, super well. I know, which is weird. I mean, not that weird. It's a pretty weird game. I mean, but it had a hot chick on the cover at a time when like that was really all you needed. <laughs> I mean, like really, think about it. Like the, that sold a lot of shit. It was like, oh, there's a hot chick with a chainsaw. But I do think it's relatively expensive now. I could be wrong. Huh. Not like absurdly so but more than some... five bucks <laughs> yeah I think I think there's been some heft to the price um the fuck the else PlayStation you... move the PlayStation move ports of Dark Side Chronicles Umbrella Chronicles I'm glad those games got ported somewhere yeah uh, cause they're pretty cool. cool I love rail shooters so I thought those I, were really them, really good but... like gun rail shooters uh they obviously they work great on the Wii like all like gun shooters did but yeah. um I'm glad they got ported somewhere else. Uh, Virtual Fighter Five Final Showdown. I'm not sure what's special about that version. I think that had DLC, like all the DLC characters in oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Um, Not yeah, much PlayStation, else. PlayStation hmm. Three, Lollipop Chainsaw, complete in box right now. I just looked it up. It's sixty bucks. Yeah, that's a lot. Like that, it w- it was legit. You could get that everywhere for like five bucks. It was in the the cardboard bins that they put up around Black Friday to get that game yeah. the fuck out of their store. So, and if you have it new, it's one oh five. Wowzers. Mm. Well, let's see. Over on the Xbox 360, uh, a shorter list and a lot of a lot, lot of, of comp, lot of repeats, except for uh, one pretty big one. Uh, or was that before? No. Where did it go? It's over there. I Hold moved on. it. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of 20 years ago. Never mind. Uh, this is just a bunch of nothing. Uh, Deep Pack, <laughs> Chopra's Leela. Inversion, Bang Bang Racing, Dirt Showdown, Lollipop Chainsaw again, Babel Rising again, Adventures of Shuggy, mm. uh, Brave, the video game again, Lego Batman 2, Just Dance Greatest Hits, London Olympics 2012, and Jeremy McGrath's Off-Road. So that, to me, minus Lollipop Chainsaw, is a big old nothing burger. Yeah, I mean, Lego Lego Batman is fun. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're into the, the Lego Batman games, which I know you're not. Um, but like that's that's decent. I, they sold like fucking crazy. Oh yeah, but they were Obviously, but they were also like, like everywhere. It's it's hard to. I don't want to put that in anybody's like win column for like this was a really good month for this platform because of this because it was oh, sure, on everything. Sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's in on all the platforms we're mentioning uh, today. But mm-hmm. yeah, outside of that, that's that's not a lot going on. Not a great month for Xbox 360. I, I mean, this is kind of what June is though. Yeah, the uh, the Xbox 360 lollipop chainsaw. Apparently, it sold way better on the Xbox uh, because did. that is only seventeen dollars. And that's what I would seventeen expect. loose, uh, yeah. twenty five complete. But that that's that's understandable. Yeah, like the uh, sixty bucks for the PlayStation version is kind of that's 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 wild. That's kind of crazy. So let's see. Uh, the Wii had a much better month than it has in a little while. Right, we had the last two months for Wii games have been like five titles or less. Yeah, uh, we're and not at great one. titles at that. Yeah, these aren't great titles either. <laughs> <laughs> but they but are there's indeed more, more of them. Yeah, we've got Summer Stars 2012. I don't even know what that is. No, um, Madagascar Three again. Oh, uh, so Pikmin good. Two New Play Control. That was pretty cool. That uh, was kind of cool that they re put that out with. Yeah. Some different we, we pointer so controls were were really nice, and I think it ran a widescreen too, so that was pretty nice. Pikmin's uh, so good. Sesame Street, Elmo's musical masterpiece. Oh my god, so good, <laughs> so so. What an underrated fucking jet. I mean, just from the title alone, musical masterpiece. It's yeah, really. As long as you can kill Elmo, because he's the worst. That's right. How's uh, that working out for you? Being clever. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler Durden. Uh, Brave <laughs> Tyler the video made money game? selling women's fat asses back to them. <laughs> Brave the video game, Lego Batman 2, Amazing Spider-Man, Just Dance Greatest Hits, and Ice Age Continental Drift Arctic Games. Mm. 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 Mm-hmm. Yes. Delicious. A thousand times yes. Let's see if the 3DS handled itself any better. I'm going to say no. We've got... <laughs> Probably not. Madagascar 3, Art of Balance, Touch... Mad Dog McCree. Wow, they ported that to 3DS, huh? Mm. Uh, Lego Batman 2, Order Up. Slither Link by Nicoli. The Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man, Jewel Master, Cradle of Rome 2 3D. Bomb Monkey and Marvel Pinball 3D. Marvel sure Pinball, Marvel is, pretty Pinball is pretty dope. Yeah. Uh, if Bomb Monkey is what I think it is, I need to look that one up. I think that was the Atui puzzle game that eventually got uh, repurposed into a Mutant Muds uh, puzzle game. Yep, yeah. This So this was by Atui, uh, okay. the people who did Mutant Muds and whatnot. And uh, for the Mutant Muds collection, they just repurposed this exact game into a Mutant Muds game. Um, huh. So, yeah, it's a pretty decent, you know, falling block puzzle. I like yeah. it. Good times. But, yeah. Way to go, 3DS. <laughs> well uh, done. Yeah, so that's all we got left is the, the PSP and the Vita. PSP had Gungnir, 
I, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, and Unchained Blades, and the Vita had Gravity Rush, Metal Gear Solid HD Collection, and something called Pulse R. I mean, Gravity Rush is fucking great. Yeah, Gravity and Rush. Metal I've Gear heard Solid of. HD Collection is fucking great. That is, I PSP, hands down. That's Vita. That's that's v- just sorry, Vita. Vita that's yeah. what I meant. Vita, yeah. hands down. Vita is hands down the winner of this month. Hands, and it makes sense, right? Because you're you're thinking here, companies like, what what are they going to put out? If you had a portable system, that you're going on road trips, you know, you're going whatever. It makes sense that those games came out for this month. Yeah, uh, though it makes less sense that the 3DS's lineup was so weak. Yeah, well, but yeah. what are you going to do? Me? We're going to move on to 20 we're gonna years ago. We're going to move back 20 There you go. There it was. We're going to move back 20 years so to the year of our Lord 2002, June. Uh, no releases for original PlayStation. Uh, we're looking at PS2, Xbox, GameCube, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. Okay. Game Boy Color still barely, barely kicking it here. Uh, PS2. This was, I think, Tom Clancy's End Game. I just wrote End Game. Uh, oh, sure, sure. Why not? UFC every, I think every game had to have Tom Clancy's name on it. At that point, it was just about required. Yeah. Uh, Tom Clancy's UFC Throwdown. <laughs> Tom. Cl- <laughs> right. It was so good. So weird seeing like the fucking spy goggles. <laughs> Uh, let's see. UFC Throwdown, Prism Chapter 1, The Dark Unicorn, Monster Jam Maximum Destruction, Global Cho- Tour Challenge Africa, Downforce, Fireblade, Wipeout Fusion, F1 2002, MX Superfly, Freak Style, Shifters, Legion, The Legend of Excalibur, Disney's Stitch, Experiment 626, MLB Slugfest 2003, Mike Tyson Heavyweight Boxing, Stuntman, Sky Gunner, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 7, Gravity Games Bike Street Vert Dirt, Men in Black 2 Alien Escape, and Barbarian. Yep. Whew. People I, liked Stuntman. That was a that was a winner. Yeah. I didn't play much of it, but that was a big success. I, I couldn't if it was on the screen, I wouldn't know what I was looking at. Yeah. So I'm not the guy to talk about it, apparently. Uh, I can't think of anything else on here. I remember this Prism game, and I don't think there ever was a Chapter 2. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's see. a bold move to put out a game and name it Chapter 1. Right? Like, that. that's bold, man. Like, okay, but... Let's see. You Prism better. Prism Chapter 2. Did that happen? Hmm. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm not seeing a Chapter 2. <laughs> Prism, Prism, Chapter One: The Dark Unicorn. Uh, I looked that up on YouTube, and like the first thing that came up was the worst PS2 game I've ever played. (laughs) It had some pretty, pretty gnarly box art too, so that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, not a banner month for the PS2. A lot of games, uh, you know, is what it is. Xbox, however, Xbox had a pretty big month. Uh, there's a lot, uh, a handful of schlock, Outlaw Golf, I know people like the Soldier of Fortune game, Soldier of Fortune 2 Double Helix came out, Red Card 2003, Tetris Worlds was solid, Splashdown was solid, but the big one was Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. Oh, yeah, I mean, people are still fucking playing that game. Yeah, people are still playing it. Not as many as uh, Oblivion, but, uh, you know, Oblivion wouldn't have happened without Morrowind. This was really, this was the first one of these games that hit consoles, I believe. Yeah, and I remember it my just roommate at the time exploded. Was, yeah, the people loved this one, and then it just went even further when Oblivion came out. But yeah, Morrowind's where the the ground the ground was laid for that, and that was a pretty pretty big deal that it was on Xbox too. Uh, so yeah, Elder Scrolls Morrowind, big deal. Let's see how the GameCube looks, which also had a really good month. Uh, Bomberman Generations is a game a lot of people like. I never got into it myself, but that was... I remember people liking that. Uh, WWE WrestleMania X8. I have no idea if that was any good. That was pretty good. Uh, F1 2002, Tetris Worlds, Red Card 2002, MX Superfly. But the big one on GameCube was another game that people still talk about to this day, Eternal Darkness. Oh, man. Man! Cool-ass game. What could have been? 
Yeah, I really, I've never finished playing through that game. I should really do that. I keep hoping they're going to re-release it someday, but that ain't never happening. What could have uh, been? Silicon Knights. So they, they, fucking clever. They were really onto something, something cool with that game. Yeah. God, so fucking cool. So cool. That what really should have. That really should have become a franchise. It really should have been remade by now. Honestly, like yeah. Or at the very least, you know, just just slight HDified re re released. I mean, I, I think a proper remake would be more due because that game had a difficult development. It's a bit janky. Like it started oh, off as a super four game and stuff. Yeah, but it's got so many good ideas. And Nintendo still owns that IP, and I would just love to see them do something with it. And I is can't. It, is the negativity surrounding it just too much to overcome, though? Uh, what if like Silicon Knights? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I it's been long enough, right? Yeah, I mean, people still talk about this game like it's you know it, it was such a, a, a you know groundbreaking in the way it would break the fourth wall with with gaming itself. Like, oh, it was, you know, it was incredible. Yeah, it was super cool, and I, 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 I don't know why Nintendo's sitting on it. Probably because they, they do what they always do. They can't think of something really good to do with it, but they should just let somebody else do it. They should just find a studio who wants to make a new Eternal Darkness game that they trust, and they say, "All right, have fun." Give it to Suda Fifty One. Oh my God! <laughs> just let him go fucking nuts. I don't know about that one. Yes, <laughs> do it. Coward. Oh my god. Alright, moving on to the Game Boy Advance. Got Lilo and Stitch, Robo Pond 2, Nicktoons Racing, Pinball of the Dead, Mega Man Battle Network 2, Metabox AX Metabi, and GT Advance 2. Yeah. It was a perfectly yeah. fine month for Game Boy Advance. It was, you know, those Robopon and Metabots and, and even Mega Man Battle Network all kind of chasing the Pokemon popularity there uh but pinball of the dead's pretty fun so yeah yeah it's a good time and over on the game boy color uh there they uh released resident evil gaiden which is a a super expensive game i so, sold the box so and manual recently for like a, oh well over a hundred dollars uh at that convention i did a while a while ago so you know okay yeah <laughs> all right it made them happy yeah, it was hey, just, man. Sitting, just just sitting in a box at my house, so good times. So that's uh, that's 2002. Um, Eternal Darkness and Morrowind, I think, were the real standouts there. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything else that really jumped out at me. But yeah, Xbox and GameCube had had solid, especially for June, like pretty big titles land. Yeah, for sure. So let's travel back to 1992. Let's go 30 years into the past. And see what we came up with. I've got NES, Genesis, Turbo Graphics, Neo Geo, and Super Nintendo listed. I didn't finish. Damn, I didn't do Game Boy. I'll see if I can look that up. Uh, but anyway, I think we're just gonna have to skip it. I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> Assume. <laughs> all right. Did anything good come out for Game Boy? Uh, let's see. List. Uh, let me look this up real quick. Assume it was all shit. It probably was. I mean, I, I know they don't have these. Okay, this is this is listed. Okay, I can do this. Nineteen ninety-two, June, and okay, found them. There is not much. That's okay. Oh boy, I sure I'm glad I looked this shit up. <laughs> oh man, what a schlock! All right. Anyway, let's start with NES. <laughs> NES had um. Ugh. Uh, Daydream and Davy, Darkwing Duck, Ferrari yes. Grand Prix Challenge, King's Quest V, yes. Power Punch 2, and Yoshi. That's um, not bad, considering that's really it's not 92. Bad. Like, yeah. we've already got Ninten uh, Super Nintendo and Genesis out on the market. That's not bad. Darkwing Duck freaking rules. Yeah, that game's NES, awesome. NES port of King's Quest V is surprisingly workable, you know? Um... <laughs> Power Punch 2 is meh. I love Yoshi. I think that's a really cool game. Yeah. I like I'm mean, like I like falling block puzzle games. It's just me. No, sure, but man, Darkwing Duck is the I mean, for yeah. me, that's the the standout there. I think there's no question that's the standout. I that mean, just... Yoshi from a sales perspective was also a standout because this was like after Mario World, the the character yeah. exploded. So like, oh, Yoshi's got his own game. 
It's a falling block puzzle that's very <laughs> confusing. But a lot of people bought it before they found out what it was. That's right. But no, without a doubt, Darkwing Duck is the winner here. Yeah, that game rules. I mean, that is old school Capcom awesome. Yeah. Just good, good stuff. How Capcom, unless I'm crazy and somehow have missed it, how they did the Disney games that they did but didn't include Gargoyles... Like, how is there not an awesome Gargoyles game where we're all like, fuck, this game is so good. Somebody else got Gargoyles. Uh, that was on Genesis. Uh, who made but that like, one? Where's the Super Nintendo Gargoyles game? Like, it I'm was... retroactively angry that it never happened. It was de oh, it was developed internally. Disney Software. Uh, and, and published by Disney as well. And it was only on the Genesis. And I can't remember if it was really cool, or... I think it was just, like, fine. I mean, I'm talking Capcom at the height of their 16-bit powers. We, that's what we should have gotten, yeah, for sure. Oh. I, honestly, this Gargoyles game, if I remember correctly, I, I haven't played much of it, because I wasn't a big Genesis guy at the time. But, uh, it's pretty cool looking. Um, yeah. I should really try to play this. Let's see. It's it's it it looks great. So this was like following the success of Aladdin on Genesis. Right. So it's got like a kind of a similar situation of like it's really well animated. Um I really wonder if this plays as well as it looks cuz it looks freaking awesome. Like gra grab a YouTube video of this one and watch it go. It's it is really really awesome looking. Yeah, I am um, Xanatos. <laughs> I try to keep my uh my gargoyles uh like purchases and like fandom like I try to keep it in check because like NECA started doing the figures and I was yeah, like Yeah they did. Oh man if I get one like that's then not a screwed. one and done. Yeah. No way you've gotta have them all because there's not that many, you know? But did they eventually all get through all of them? I saw the I saw the Demona. I didn't see anything else. Uh there's been um Demona was the second one or was Brooklyn the second one? And then the big, uh, oh, the dude with the long gray hair. Hudson. Hudson. I think it's Hudson. Yeah. And then I think there's been more since then. Hold on. I'm pulling up Big Bad Toy Store right now to see if I can, if I can find it. All right. So Goliath, uh, Thalog, Brooklyn. Bronx. They did freaking Thalog. Yeah. I guess because it's the same mold. That makes sense. He's in, he's like the current one that I see all the time now. Uh, Brooklyn, Bronx, Hudson, and Demona. And I, mean, like, I guess because who the fuck wants a Thalog figure? Yeah. I mean, oh man, I don't know. Goliath is only 35 bucks on Big Bad Toy Story right now. I know Evan has it, and it's fucking gorgeous. That show, I swear to God. I, on one hand, why, I'm glad they haven't uh, tried to to readapt that one, but on the other hand, like Ducktales came out so well, so good. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, sorry. game looks cool. But, but <laughs> Darkwing Duck, awesome. Yeah, Darkwing Duck on NES, <laughs> fantastic game. Uh, let's see how the Genesis did. Um, Bulls versus Lakers, the NBA playoffs, Kadash. David Robinson's Supreme Court. Boy, that has a different meaning right now, huh? <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> Ferrari really Grand does. Prix Challenge, Fighting Masters, Krusty Super Funhouse, MLBPA Sports Talk Baseball, Olympic Gold Barcelona 92, Bart versus the Space Mutants, Warrior <laughs> of Rome 2, and Splatterhouse 2. Yeah, I mean, Splatterhouse 2 is cool. Yeah. Um, I like that a lot. I think people like Kadash. I don't know that game, but yeah, Kadash is okay. Familiar. I mean, Bart versus the Space Mutants is—it's uh, just a monster piece. <laughs> it was a callback, kids. You see what thank, we did there? Thank you for that. Well done, Kadash. Well, so you're this like weird nun-looking woman with a whip. So it's yeah, like, it's cool. That's weird. All right, good times. You uh, don't have the nun with a whip fetish, Chris? All right. Weirdo. No, I'm, I'm that one guy. <laughs> You're not the a, one. Not a crazy good month for Genesis. A lot of, lot of sports, which is what they, they hit on. But Yeah, the sports talk stuff was always cool. Yeah. 
Sports like it was talk, a little less Gold novel Lakers, at this point, but still Dave cool. Supreme Court was a was it just Supreme. I feel like there, I'm missing a word here. It can't just have been called Supreme Court. Oh, it's basketball, so it was just called Supreme Court. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. David Robinson, Supreme Court. The Admiral David Robinson. Oh, he sorry. was in the Navy. I see. Where he got drafted from. And his nickname was the Admiral. All hands on deck. It's he was, the Admiral. He was real good. Uh, Didn't win shit until Tim Duncan got there, but like that's neither here nor there. You put you know the story. Oh yeah, got it. You, you know the late. You know everything about the late nineties, early two thousand Spurs. I, like I don't have to tell you. Hand. You don't have to tell me. I don't. Uh, oh. TurboGrafx sixteen. We got Cosmic Fantasy two and Gunboat. <laughs> <laughs> Nope. Uh, Neo Geo got King of the Monsters too. Oh, that game's That's fucking great. awesome. Yeah. Love, Love King of the big monsters. monsters punching each other in the face. Yeah, that was a good time. Uh, Super Nintendo had Super Battle Tank, War in the Gulf, Krusty Super Funhouse, Space Football One on One. I'm unfamiliar <laughs> with that game. Uh, Su- Super Soccer Champ, Thunder Spirits, and. Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Uh, Thunder Spirits is pretty cool, right? Am I, I want to say yes. Thunder Spirits. What are you? Thunder Spirits is... Oh, yeah, it's like a Thunder Force kind of game. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Thunder Spirits was pretty this cool. This is Thunder Force 3. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, that's a good time. Um... What else was uh, I looking at? Um, what is space football one on one? I feel like this has got to be a soccer thing, and I just wrote the wrong title down. It's got to be the best game ever made. S- no, this is okay. Space football one on one is actually called space football in the north North America. What in the? I've never heard of this before. It looks awful. <laughs> it looks amazing. <laughs> I mean, you and I have very different definitions of that word. Oh, I, I mean, I am amazed that <laughs> it does. It does look awful, but like, kind of looks like Ball Blazer for seventy eight hundred. Yeah, but, but not good. <laughs> but weird. What the? I've never heard of this. That's so wild. There's a Super Nintendo game that I've just straight up never heard of. Because you know what's awesome about football, the 11-on-11 sport, making it one-on-one. If you put it in space. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like when you were a kid and you would, like, go play football against your buddy and you had to be both the quarterback and the receiver? That's a good time. That is a good time. Yeah, everybody loves that. Throwing the ball up real high in the air and then running to catch it like fucking Bugs Bunny and shit. Anyway, Legend of the <laughs> Mystical Ninja rules. So yeah, that game's cool. At least, at least that's got on the that. Virtual Console, right? I think it was released on Wii U Virtual Console. It's not on NSO though. It's not okay. currently available. I wish it was because I've never really played the Mystical Ninja games, and I really should. You really, really should. The Super Nintendo one and the first N sixty four one in particular, I've heard, are very good. So. Someday. But yeah, Darkwing Duck and Legend of the Mystical Ninja, I think, are probably the big winners for this month. I can't think yeah. of anything else that's super huge. So No. Okay. Another another letdown. Not a great month. Uh June's not not great for video games, apparently. But uh Never let's has go been. back. Let's go back forty. Forty years ago. Robotron twenty eighty four may have hit arcades in June. Uh, I put a question mark because I couldn't really nail that down, but we are at approximately the 40th anniversary of Robotron 2084, which freaking rules! Yeah, that game's awesome. Yeah, that game absolutely rocks. Uh, Over on the Intellivision, I'm looking at Utopia and Space Spartans. Yep. Utopia, I have definitely heard people talk about. I have a couple copies of that game myself. I've never played it. Space Spartans, I think, was... Uh, the Intellivision's riff on um, Star Raiders. Yeah, that's what this looks okay. like. You know, this is a space flight simulator kind of thing with totally not TIE Fighters flying around. Totally not TIE Fighters. I do believe this not. is one of those games that has a bit of a fun... 
intelligent fans were fond of that one. Sure. So that's a solid month for Intellivision. Uh, Twenty six hundred though had some had some real winners. Uh, we've got Racquetball, something called Lost Luggage. I've okay. never heard of Lost Luggage for twenty six hundred. I got to see what this looks like. <laughs> Lost luggage for Atari 2600. What in the world? It is a... Uh... Oh my god. It's a... Uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a... Uh... It's one of the, the revolving things that the... The baggage claim things. The just okay. shooting... Just shooting bags out and you're trying to catch them as these two little <laughs> stick figures. I take it back. This is the most amazing game I've ever seen in my life. It's basically kaboom, but instead of the bombs just falling straight down, they come down on angles, and you're catching luggage instead of bombs. Okay. This is awesome. This is amazing. I hope it's a... Is it paddle-controlled? I want to say it looks like it's paddle-controlled, but oh my god, this looks incredible. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this looks incredible. I I've never have. heard of this before. Where? Oh, damn. I'm discovering all kinds of wonderful things. Lost luggage for Atari 2600. That's incredible. Okay, that sounds awesome. Um, racquetball, I believe, is garbage. Uh, lockjaw slash shark attack for 2600. Okay. I think it was released under uh, two different names depending on the region. Let's see. Which one is this? Shark attack for 2600. I could swear... Ferg's done this game on his show. I don't know this one enough. Either way, uh, that's that's not one that I know super well. But uh, we've got... I think we had two Activisions, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, Activision did... Was Star Master one? Star Master for 2600... See now, Star Master is another uh, Star Raiders like riff on Star Raiders. But yes, this okay. is Activision One. So, Activision Twenty Six Hundred games were always pretty solid, especially around this era. I don't know this yeah. one very well, but it looks for a Twenty Six Hundred game, it looks nice, about as nice as Star Raiders did. Can't say I know much about this one, but the other one was uh, Activision's uh, Chopper Command. Okay. Chopper Command's pretty cool. And that one's I, good, right? Yeah, I played a bunch of Chopper Command on 2600. I know it came out on other platforms, too. I can't remember if this originated somewhere else, and this was a port of an old PC game, but, um... Oh, I'm thinking of Choplifter, if that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, that's oh, the well, port. that's very so, different. Chopper Command's really cool. Chopper Command reminds me a bit of Defender, right? So you've got, like, a, a, a radar on the bottom, and you've got a bunch... Like, you're a helicopter that's flying around shooting lasers, as you do. Uh, and you're just like blowing up planes and stuff and trying to protect, I think, a caravan that's going along on the bottom of the screen. And the planes are trying to bomb the caravans uh, on the bottom and you're just basically trying to stop them. Uh, you know, score, classic score attack mm -hmm. type stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's got the really cool uh, Activision sunset going on in the background. I love that effect that they did. Activision that was made so this, cool. That gradient sunset, Activision threw it into like a bunch of games. It was such a nice look. Um yeah, this is a really fun game. I really like Chopper Command. I'm not great at it. <laughs> I'm not very <laughs> good at it at all. Because, uh, like, the laser fire is, like, super thin. So right. it is kind of right, tough right. to hit some of the, the planes in the helic. The, the planes in particular are thinner. There are other choppers that fly around that you are that are a little bit easier to hit, I think, although they move super fast. But I always had a hard time with the, the planes because they're so thin. Um, and they shoot these little the, the missiles out that split and go up and down. But now Chopper Command rules. Chopper Command is a is is a solid ass game, but the big one for me would have to be Atari's Defender. Yeah, oh, I do I, love Defender. Uh, Defender is great, but I never got into the arcade one because I never played the arcade one when I was a kid. But sure. I got I got Defender on twenty six hundred, and I remember seeing the artwork for that one, being like, "What the hell is this? This looks crazy cool." Obviously, I didn't say what the hell is this because I was a little tiny kid at the time. But like, that's right. You were like, "Mom, what the fuck." <laughs> Seriously, this was such. I love Defender on twenty six hundred. I was obsessed with this one. Um, the sounds are so cool. I just really loved the um, the whole idea of this game. Um, it looked really nice on the twenty six hundred. Like the way the city scrolled across the bottom. Yeah. But like all the enemy designs, while incredibly simplistic, were super fun to look at. And I love the concept of like you've got these green spaceships that are kidnapping people from the city. 
and you can shoot them down and then catch the people and save them and drop them back down into the city. But if you oh, don't so save them, they turn them into these like vicious red alien attack things. Yep. And I always like I always felt that like in my gut as a kid being like, oh, man, I that person's not them. just dead. They're like converted into evil alien robot things. This is so <laughs> this is so sad. But like, man, this game sounds so awesome. They made the laser blast like incredibly cool, and they did it by basically whenever you shoot, your ship disappears. So yeah. they could make the laser this like thick, crazy, colorful, awesome thing. And like there's just something about the sound of this game. The the um the, all the the very there aren't a ton of sound effects, but like the the gun sound effect itself for when you're shooting your laser, the sound effect when you die when it, you explode in little tiny bits. But like specifically the weird like whenever you save a human sound, like all the sounds in this game really really stick with me. I freaking love Defender on twenty six hundred. <laughs> I'm terrible at the arcade game. That whole two button thing, I yeah. Just, I'm not good at it at all. Playing it with a basic joystick, though, I know it kind of defeats some of the purpose of the ar- arcade game being as sure. hard as it was. But as a kid, I didn't know any better, and I just thought this game was great. I loved it. I played it mostly on um, my computer. Um, okay. I played the MS DOS version mostly, but the diner we used to go to all the time, to- all the time, uh, Geet's Diner in Williamstown, New Jersey had Defender for the longest up in their lobby. And, like, I would always bug my uh, my grandmother. I mean, please can I have a couple quarters? Go play Defender. I fucking love Defender. I don't want to sit here while you guys talk about weird shit because you're old and you're with my mom and that's, like, it's just... Please let me fucking go. And, like, she would always... You know, she was a grandmother, so she always had a couple quarters. You know, yes, go play you Defender. That's not at all what she sounded like, but... <laughs> I would, go play your Defender, you little brat. I never realized that Defender and Chopper Command came out on the 2600 at the same time, and obviously Defender was the more... Uh, that was the bigger name, and this, yeah. was, uh, this was apparently developed by Williams, but published by Atari, so it was one of those Rainbow Box uh, first-party games that came with the uh, an Atari Force comic originally. That's so um, good. I mean, I can't imagine this game didn't outsell Chopper Command, even though Chopper Command is great, uh, and all the Activision stuff, especially the early Rainbow Label Activision stuff, was really, really solid. But uh, man, I, I just personally, Defender was just one of my favorite 2600 games. It was such I just a remember being so blown away by the fact that I could go backwards. Right, going back and forth was a like, pretty cool thing. What is even happening? No <laughs> games do this. Yeah, that you was know, pretty like, sweet. Uh, and ju- it just the, the the scrolling in general, like a lot of games were especially you think of Asteroids Missile Command, other ones kind of in a similar style like it was a single screen experience, you know. Yeah. This was scrolling and and looped. It was you know rudimentary especially by today's terms, but Oh, you know, sure, but I, for us it was incredible. They used to have they had Defender and Moon Patrol. And I always played Defender over Moon Patrol. Moon Patrol. Like, I liked Moon Patrol. I love the music in Moon Patrol. <laughs> but I like Defender better. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, Defender's awesome. And this this box art, man, this classic box art for Defender was another one that really just kind of... The, 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 the outfit of the woman on the front is so very 80s, but, like, the oh, fact yeah. that they're getting zapped up by the plane and, like, the one dude's, like, half disappeared and transparent and, like... I don't know, man. I love I love Atari box art. The the old color box Atari box art is is amazing to me. It always will be. But I wonder, w- do we have the story on Defender? What year is Defender supposed to be taking place in? Uh, let's see. Um, because hmm. I mean, like when we were kids, video games and movies told us that like in the two thousands. We were going to have flying cars and fucking replicators and all types of really cool shit, and we're still arguing about whether or not the Earth is flat. So, like, I feel very lied to. I do not see a proper story, and I mm. don't think... Def- Defender didn't get one of those super cool records that Atari produced. No? Um, okay. Because it was still a Williams game, even though they... Mm. Per- they uh published it yeah i don't know i'm not seeing anything about the story all right 
Well, that about wraps it up. I think... I mean, I love this for, for Atari. Between Lost Luggage, Defender, and Chopper Command, I think that might be my favorite platform that we talked about. I think that, yeah, that, I think that so. was the best one. Uh, I mean, GameCube had Eternal Darkness, which was great. NES had Darkwing Duck, but yeah, I think that, pound for pound, I think Atari 2600 was the winner for this, uh, for this month. In the 10, yeah. 20, 30, 40. I think so. And that's got to wrap it up for us, because, uh, yeah, it's late. I'm tired. I got work to do in the morning. This was fun. It always is. Uh, no, it's so, always a good time. I'm going to need your help on this one. Join us next time when we get back to our uh, uh, Stone Age starter kits. What are we on? We we're on PlayStation, right? Is that where we left off? Uh, physical challenge. Hold on. <laughs> I didn't know that this was happening, so I'm pulling up the list, like, literally right now. Uh, yeah, PSX. Yeah, PlayStation PlayStation 1. Extreme! Oh, one. That's right. PSX. Yeah. You know, for one, even though it's the Roman numeral for ten. Whatever. Who's counting? Yeah, it's PlayStation. Who cares? Yeah, no, this is going to be a really, uh, a really, really interesting list. And I'm I think really... we already got some lists from our listeners, too, back when we yeah. said we were going to do this a couple of months ago. So, I know. Uh, anybody listening, resend those lists, because... Because we're to, not going back, and when I, I say we, begin I mean Chris. To scroll through uh, Discord to try to find all of them. But yeah, yeah, please resend. Like, please, please, please. I am really, really curious um, to hear everybody's because I know we have some younger listeners. Um, and by younger, I mean you're still old as fuck, but not as old as fuck as we are. You know, so I'm really curious to see because I know for for some of our listeners, right? I think like this era of gaming was like their first system. Oh damn! Look at this. I didn't realize they put these up. So, um, Retro HQ finally got us uh, some Jaguar game drives back in stock, and it looks like we have. Um, uh, so, so the, the previous game drives, I think, were the the carts themselves were three D printed, like high quality three D printed. Sure. But now they're a uh, this injected molding. It looks like it's it's a different plastic. Um, they've been talking about it in the Discord, and I haven't been paying much attention. But like, looks like we put some up in stock. I would be shocked and amazed if these weren't sold out by the time they uh by the time Friday this show show hits but yeah uh, yeah injected molded shell look at that way to go retro HQ these look nice I'd like to see one in person but you know still and we go. are saying only uh PlayStation the original PlayStation was region locked correct yes so okay. I know there were a lot of very easy ways to unregion sure. lock the original sure. PlayStation I spend some time doing that myself with the spring and stuff like that yeah but now yeah, we're, yeah yeah just for the sake of conversation laying down ground rules to figure to make it a fun conversation just north american ntsc titles that's it i am 100, 100 ducks Quack. 100 ducks that's right silent hill is not gonna make the list because i was just just kind of looking um had price charting up still and uh, that game's a hundred bucks. Whoa, really? Yeah. Damn, I have that game. Apparently, um, there is a town um, in Pennsylvania called Centralia or Centralia that the Silent Hill series is somewhat based on or inspired by. Huh. That's so, terrifying. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I'm gonna try and go, I think. <laughs> Apparently there's, like, one person who still lives there. I don't know. So I, mean, I have 144 PlayStation 1 games. Mm-hmm. And according to GameEye, they total at about $5,938. Jesus. Whereas on Saturn, I have 82 games totaling at $10,726. <laughs> Go figure. PS2, I, mean, you have... I have... Wow, this is funny. I have almost the exact same number of... I have 144 PlayStation games, 142 PlayStation 2 games. I should buy two PS2 games just to make that level out. <laughs> PS2 games total about $2,617. So... Yeah. What are you going to do there? 
I don't know. My I entire video game collection is not worth that much. So, <laughs> but I do have well, Clock Tower, and I do have Castlevania Chronicles. Bubsy 3D. That's gonna make the list. That's a must play for sure. And I do have Silent Hill. So, like, I only have a few PlayStation One games left over, but like, they're all relatively expensive. Like, hmm. shockingly so. ECW Hardcore Revolution, seven dollars. Why do you have that? Um, because it was me or the trash. <laughs> I mean, that game that's is that's the answer for a lot terrible. of a lot of these games that I have. It was either me or the trash. I really do need to like pare down my PS2 uh, collection here. Or sorry, my PS1 collection here. That game is definitely terrible. some games I could stand to get rid of. I love ECW. Love. I, re I remember hearing that game was absolute garbage, but like, it who is, the hell is even going to buy it from me? It, I mean, you could give it to me. I actually don't. I don't even want it. Exactly. Um, I even if you give wanted to give it to me, I would be like, well, eh, save the, save the stamp. <laughs> use it as a coaster. Man, I don't, I don't know. Want to use it as a coaster? This is going to be a really interesting list. I'm really curious to see like where where this goes. Yeah, I, I don't, really even, don't know. even know what I'm doing. Yet. Yeah, I, really I don't either. Put some thought into it. Very oh, interesting. Man. All right. Well, Say yep, goodnight, that Gracie. wraps it up. We're on most social media platforms, and if you want to get in touch with us, we aren't very difficult to find. All it takes is a quick look at our show notes, and you'll see links to our social media accounts, as well as all manner of other fun stuff, like a link to our namesake, StoneAgeGamer.com, the Geek Aid Patreon, which helps keep the show running week after week, and more useful links than you can shake a joystick at. This show's theme song, Squared Roots, was written by Banjo Guy Ali. You can learn all about his wonderful music and more, including his adorable new puppy, by following the link to his YouTube channel, also in the show notes. And I finally, can't believe he didn't adopt it from us. It's fucked up. I think, I think he was really far away. That's but, not, no, no excuse. Do you ship your puppies? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> 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 Hundred percent free shipping on Slap all dogs and a bubble mailer <laughs> rescued through safe and home. Wait, That's no, my... no, my rescue is Peyton's place. A bunch of assholes they are. Okay, they anyway, ship puppies. They <laughs> ship. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking terrible. Flat rate. Flat rate. Yes, they flatten the puppies. Finally, as always, we'd like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks, and we'd like to thank all you folks for listening in the first place. That is it on behalf of Dan and myself. Keep playing games.